Whether Argentina is the most football-loving country in the world, that's something we could debate for days on end. What's not up for debate is that one particular city is the heart of the country, Rosario. The city that built a church to Maradona and witnessed the birth of Lionel Messi. Today, Diego returns to the promised land. A football player, a man from the slums, an artist, a junkie, an avenger, a leftist, a pioneer, a playboy, a freak, a villain, a symbol of popular redemption. This is the story of Diego Armando Maradona's last year on this earth. His last year as a manager in Argentinian football. The last miracle of Diego. Gimnasia are shrouded in a dream. The victory against Godoy Cruz and Maradona's presence seems to have made his people forget the bad sporting times. But although Maradona's life may seem fictitious, it's not. And once again, reality hits him head on. The 10th match day is against Union. Diego's frenzy is not enough. Now we have to get some points, he says before the match. And actually, even though since arriving El Bosque has been a party, El Lobo only managed to get three points out of a potential 12. El Lobo has no choice. Tijanovic gets the first chance for El Tripero, and the Tatenge goalkeeper responds. In the second half, the play repeats itself. Tijanovic shoots, and Moyano saves it once again. Although Gimnasia proved to have a bigger fan base, Union de Santa Fe take the three points from El Bosque. Bonifacio hits a volley in the 71st minute of the game. It's time to check the average points again, and Diego seems to be the most burdened by the situation. His team cannot get a home victory, and the week is getting more intense. The expectation for his 59th birthday and the next game is already a national issue. And if we are talking about intensity, welcome to Rosario, the most football-loving city in Argentina. It's tough to find a stronger rivalry than this one. One of the most important cities in the country is polarized into two teams, Rosario Central and Newell's. Rosario is the second city which provided the most players to the Argentinian national team. Los Canallas boasts of having made an inescapable contribution. Cesar Luis Menotti, a World Cup champion coach. Starting with him, a long list symbolized by Luciano Figueroa, Cristian Gili González, Cesar Delgado, and still prevails on players like Ángel Di María and Giovanni Lo Celso. Across the street, Los Leprosos answers them with the unmistakable Marcelo Bielsa, and they lay claim to Mauricio Pochettino, Américo Gallego, Jorge Valdano, Gabriel Batistuta, Walter Samuel, Maximiliano Rodríguez, and Lionel Scaloni. But they have two aces up their sleeves, Lionel Messi and Diego Armando Maradona. Diego's story is little known to the wider world and his short-lived but thrilling stint with Newell's. When his 1993 return to Argentinos Juniors seemed nothing short of a fact, the GOAT was threatened by El Bicho's Barras Bravas, who demanded that he pay them $50,000. This event forever changed Diego's always indecipherable plans, and in a couple of hours he sealed his alliance with New Soul Boys, drilling away any conjectures. He only played five matches, of which two of them were friendlies, and he scored a single goal. 30,000 people attended his first training session, and during the players' presentation in front of the Ecuadorian Emelec, the stadium went absolutely crazy. Even though these stats are brief, it was enough for him to catch leprosy and go down in the rich history of a giant from the Argentinian interior provinces. That day and goal against Emelec, as historic as it was friendly, has a young Lionel Messi as a witness, who at just six years old was present at El Coloso del Parque, and he kept that memory for the rest of his life. It's tough to put yourself in the shoes of a Newell's fan. That's why the best thing to do is to watch them. Banners paying homage to Messi, and a big crowd present at Parque Independencia leaves Maradona deeply moved. It's the definitive tribute. Paintings, portraits, and love testimonials abound. I'm a leproso and no one buys me, he says tearfully. The day before his birthday, we'll have him coaching from a throne. Newells pay homage to Diego and it looks like he's forgotten gimnasia. Although the match is strained, Contin opens the scoreboard with a little bit of luck near the end of the first half. Diego couldn't be more pleased, but gimnasia are a whirlwind in the second half and in less than 15 minutes, the match is done and dusted. First Kaide, then Tijanovic. 
And to complete the party, Garcia sends the ball past the goal line next to Newell's post under Diego's watchful eye. Even though Newell's honored him in so many ways, the best birthday present seems to have been given to him by his own team. Gimnasia scored, won, and delighted everyone with their four new. Diego celebrates his 59th birthday in the best way possible, but he quickly has to get his head back in the game. At home, he still can't win, and the next match day will be the La Plata Derby, the most important game for the city's fans, and in the Tripero calendar.